Hello and welcome back to the Toolbox Project. In this episode, we are going to start running the grooves to fit the lid and the base using the router table. Let's get going. So there's a couple of ways of running grooves in components using power tools. We've got a just a normal straight cutter like this, obviously come in various diameters and also quarter inch and half inch shanks for the most part. There's a few alternatives, but those are the two main ones. Preferably if you are going to do it with one of these straight cutters, get a half inch shank. You'll just get more rigidity and a cleaner cut from that. But above all that, I find the best method to do grooving is using one of these, a slotting cutter and a router table. And so that is the method we're going to employ today. Saying that, if you don't have a router table and you need to resort to using the straight cutter, just do this with a normal overhead router with a fence on the side that can guide along the edge of this component, keeping that offset all the way along. I would advise, however, making some supporting platforms either side to ensure the router doesn't tip off when it gets to either end. But yeah, that's a great way of doing it if you don't have the router table. So firstly, with these slotting cutters, they come with removable heads. You can get them in different thicknesses to suit the different size grooves you want. Just make sure when you put that on, you put it on the correct way because you can put this on upside down and then when this spins it's not actually going to be cutting the correct way you'll know that because it will start burning and it will make this weird sort of vibrating sound and i will add that doesn't always mean the writing's up anyway let's get this fitted of course the machine is isolated at the moment now on this one i've got various sized inserts that i can use to sort of cover up the gap around the cutter and i would advise always putting on an insert that is able to accommodate the entire cutter if it were to drop through it because I could get this one on underneath this cutter sort of surrounding the shank but if for whatever reason that router dropped or whatever you don't want that spinning cutter landing on this not that that happens frequently of course it's just just in case next we're going to get the height of the cutter established and this is why I sort of cut and mark out everything prior to grooving it just gives me a more solid idea of where I want to be cutting because obviously you could do this grooving before cutting out any of these joints but anyway we want this groove to be entirely within that mitre in this case I've done a 12 millimeter offset from the bottom so this cutter obviously needs to be lowered and honestly for this project I actually eyeball this. There are measurements for it, but I just kind of get it. So it's around about there. So we've got about six millimeters of material underneath the cut and then a couple of millimeters above it as well. And once you've set that to one of the miters, check it on the remaining ones because you never know you might have got this offset slightly wrong like that is creeping a lot closer to that line than the previous one it's still within the boundary but yeah we just gotta just gotta double check these things and i'm gonna use this same offset for both the top and the bottom of the box the bottom has a tongue and groove base the top is just a loose panel in there but yeah you could change this offset if you want for both the top and bottom Next, we're going to drop this back within the fence. I'm just going to open it up slightly to accommodate the cutter, bring it forward and shroud the entire thing. And then bring those fences in, you know, somewhat close, but you want to leave enough room for this cutter to spin, obviously. I tend to leave about five millimetres either side because when we adjust the depth of cut with this, there's a chance of accidentally tilting it into the blade. So you want to have a, you want to have a bit of wiggle room for it. So just to make sure we're all on the same page with this, this orientation obviously means the piece is going to be passed upright like this through the cutter. So next, we need to sort out that depth of cut, which is dictated by how much of the cutter is poking out. The best way I find to do this is to spin the cutter so the blade is at its furthest point out. Then push the fence back with a straight piece of timber until it contacts that cutter, and then carefully lock that fence down being sure not to let it move. So we've now effectively zeroed that cutter. It's just about grabbing, but that'll be cutting not even a paper's thickness into the material. So let's call that zero. Now, some router tables have this scale built into either side that you can use to push the fence back a certain distance. But I actually find these somewhat difficult to read. So instead, what I do is I put a bit of masking tape on the table at either end, exactly where that fence currently is. Put it right on the outsides. And then all you do is unlock the fence and push it back the required offset you want, just measuring each piece of tape individually. So I want six millimeters in this case. Let's measure six millimeters there. That's locked down. Six millimeters there, give that a bit of a push. And you've got to go back and forth between them a few times. Carefully lock that down. You can then remove your masking tape. And that should give you a perfectly offset cutter at six millimeters. So at the moment, this is most of our setup done. We've got a few little bits to do just to finish it off and make sure it's super safe. But I did want to highlight something real quick. Because we're grooving a wide component, we've obviously got support from this top section here. However, if you're ever grooving a smaller component like this that doesn't have support from the top, there is a chance 
of this sort of dipping into that mouth. And so in those instances, you want to make something that's called a false fence. We're not gonna focus on it in this video because it's not needed, but I just wanted to highlight that this is not always the setup you want to go for when doing rebates or grooves or you know various other operations on the router. A false fence is something you need when you haven't got support from this top section preventing the material being sucked into the mouth. Anyway, the next step, feather boards. If you haven't got any of these for your router table, get them or various other machines for that matter. They are the best way of keeping your hands away from the cutter while also giving you more controlled cuts. This is actually a double stacked feather board, which is even better because I've got more support up the height of the fence, but more common than not, they just come with one layer. So this slides into the T-slot on the router table. And what we're gonna do is pop the component as close to the cutter as we can, just around about there and then apply pressure from the featherboard into it and lock it down. Not too much, and you know, just give it a feel. You can lift it up as well above the cutter if you wanna feel what it's like through the entire cut. I reckon I could do with a little bit more than that. Just push this back end in a bit more. That's good. And this is why I love featherboards, because it's given me one less thing to think about. All I really need to do now is just hold it down into the fence while pushing forward slightly. But it's also made it pretty much impossible to get my fingers anywhere near that cutter. It's an absolutely brilliant device, and if you haven't got one, do yourself a favor and grab some, they're brilliant. So one final thing to do before taking that cut is to roughly mark out which face these grooves are going on. Doesn't need to be anything clean, just establish which one is the inside face. Get a pencil and just scribble a little line up the top and the bottom. So do your final checks. Everything locked down, height set, offset, set, <laughs> featherboard set. These are all locked, stops out the way. Speed set, I know that's set. And of course, PPE and extraction. see here this is why I prefer cutting the joints first because if you groove it before marking and cutting out the joints you can be left with trying to retain this sort of fragile bit of material see I find it's better to establish the joints first get them all clean then do this afterwards and there you go that's how you do the grooving on the router table so again if you need any more information on this process there will be lots of supporting resources below we also plan on adding an entire routing series to the free online woodworking school in the future and so when that's available that'll be linked below it'll help those of you out who have to use a straight cutter and a fence in order to cut this groove as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the video please do not forget to press the like button subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next lesson